can you coil speaker cables behind your speaker or will it affect the performance of your system? That's the question we're going to be answering in today's video. All right, my friends. So I have these Cherry Audio cables. They're called the Mega Snake. I'm Gene Della Sala, Audioholics, in case you didn't know. In fact, make sure you subscribe. Use that bell notification so you can get more videos like this. Normally, we deal with home theater stuff, but I have to keep covering the cable stuff. So it occurred to me while I was measuring these cables, what would happen if you coil it? Would it act like an inductor? Would it cause problems? And it was a good opportunity for me to test this because I just got this new toy from Wayne Kerr. It's called the Magnetic Analyzer, an LCR meter. Now, in the past, I had a larger version of this. I had the 6240 or whatever the model was. Um, and that was that thing tested out to like a megahertz. This one's a smaller, more compact one. I went to go and basically send my unit in for calibration. And then I decided maybe I should get something smaller to fit on my desk at the new Audiolog Smart House. This tests out to 100 kilohertz. It measures every parameter you can think of for a cable. It goes with your inductance, which is LS, with your resistance, which is RDC, and then RAC or RS, which is your series resistance in the cable as a function of frequency. And then capacitance as well, it does the parallel capacitance. So basically taking this meter will allow me to understand exactly what's going on with the cable, how good of a cable it is, the performance of it. It gives me all the attributes. Sadly, most of the exotic cable vendors don't have these kind of tools. They just make cables based on whimsical evidence on what they think sounds better. But, you know, as an engineer, you need to have the right engineering tools to understand how a system works. And that's why we invest in the time to do measurements and we invest in the equipment to make sure we can accurately do said measurements. So here we are. We have this cable. This is an interesting cable. It's a braided cable. It's a six conductor. I think each conductor is 14 gauge. So the equivalent gauge of this cable is about nine gauge. Um, I did the measurements on it. I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you could kind of see what I'm looking at here. And then we could go over whether or not you could coil that speaker cable and if it's going to affect the performance of your system. So without further ado, let me get on the screen share business. Okay. So here we have uh, basically a list of cables that I've measured recently and I've kind of tabulated all the results different brands, different prices, the LS, RS, CP parameters of each cable. I'm going to put this cable down for a minute. So the one I'm looking at now is this Cherry Mega Snake. It actually is a pretty good performing cable. The inductance is relatively low. The resistance is low. I actually measured probably closer to about 10 gauge. It's close enough. It's, you know, you get some contact resistance from the connectors that I couldn't take off. I didn't want to damage the cable. So I would, I'll give it to them. It's probably really closer to nine gauge equivalent. So I took the inductance measurements because think about it. When you take a piece of wire and you coil it, that's really how you make an inductor. Although an inductor, in order for it to be really effective, it has to be a tightly wound coil of very thin wire. Um, lots of turns. You can't do these kind of turns with a 10 foot speaker cable. And you either have an air core or you have a ferrite core, different kinds of core material, depending on what you're trying to do. So the question is, if you take some excess cable behind your speaker or behind your amplifier and you coil it up like most people tend to do, is it going to be an, effect, an effective inductor and is it going to cause high frequency loss or just degradation of the audio signal? So basically, if you look at this cable that I measured, this um, cable from Cherry Audio, the Mega Snake. I, I plotted the inductance versus frequency from 100 hertz out to 100 kilohertz. So I took it as a straight cable and then I coiled it up like I was holding it just before and I measured it again. And as you could see, there was an increase in inductance, but it's really, I mean, if you think about it, like at what, at five kilohertz, it's like 10%, not a huge amount, but it's, you know, you think about, well, there is an increase in inductance. So how is that going to affect the frequency response? Okay. So if you know basic circuit design and you look at the cable as an inductor 
and you look at the load of the speaker as a resistor, we're trying to simplify things here for argument's sake. It's basically a first order RL network. So you have an eight ohm speaker or you have a four ohm speaker. I'm assuming the cable is about 20 feet in length. That's twice the, the length of the cable that I have here. So you take that inductance, so I took it at one kilohertz for that, that's at one foot, that's 0.118 microhenries per foot. And I multiplied that by 20, and that's how I came up with 2.36 microhenries. Okay, and I'm gonna zoom in on this in case you guys can't see it good enough. There we go. So hopefully you guys could see this a little bit better. So here we go. We got a 20 foot piece of cable, straight wire, is it got about 2.36 microhenries of inductance. That same cable coiled up, about 2.56 microhenries. So there's a little bit of an increase. So now if you look at, if you're trying to figure out how much loss you have, it's a very basic formula for this. It's basically the resistance divided by two pi times the inductance. And what I did was I plugged these numbers in and for a 20 foot length of cable on an eight ohm load, straight wire, the 3 dB point, meaning the signal drops 3 dB relative to its pass band, is at a whopping 539 kilohertz, way past the audio band. The audio band, it stops at around 20K. Most people can't even hear up to 20K, especially with age. So that's well beyond what you would worry about the inductance causing losses in the cable. Take that same cable, same inductance, now use a 4 ohm load, drops it about half. It's about 269 kilohertz. So what happens now when you use the coiled cable inductance? You've got the same length of cable, only now it's coiled like I showed you before, right here. Basically, we went from 539 kilohertz down to 497 kilohertz, inaudibly, indetectable, no real difference that you have to worry about. Then you take it down to a four ohm load and you're still at 248 kilohertz. Again, guys, this is well beyond the audio band, way beyond anything that you would have to concern yourself about. So at the end of the day, if you have a speaker cable, and we don't, we don't encourage you to go out of your way to coil up a cable behind a speaker, but if you've got an extra couple of feet of length and you need to coil it to hide it under a speaker or under a condenser, you're not going to cause any performance degradation. In fact, I often notice people are trying to make cables as short as they can, which is it's good practice to make your cable as short as you can, but not at the expense of adding pressure or adding um, basically having a cable, having too much tension on it. You don't want to have tension on a cable. You want to make sure that these conduct, when you plug the conductor into your speaker, or you plug it into your amplifier, you want it to have a good, nice snug fit, but you don't want anything pulling on it because the enemy of, of, signal transmission is when you have contact resistance and if you have this cable being tugged on all the time it could potentially come loose or it could fall off so always err on the side of caution i always tell people if you think you need a 10 foot speaker cable lens go an extra 10 percent if you can maybe make it 12 feet get, get that extra couple of feet you never know if you're going to move a speaker if you need to go and kind of put some slack under the under the speaker under the credenza and it's a little coil it's not going to be the end of the world you're not going to cause any audible degradation it's not even measurable within the audio band and in fact in future videos i'm going to take these cables and i'm going to take a real speaker and i'm going to use my audio precision and we're going to show you the very minuscule differences in how speaker cables affect the frequency response of the performance. So I'm kind of inspired now to do more of these measurements now that we're getting set up here at the Audioholic Smart House. You're going to be seeing more of these little kind of videos. I hope you guys found this useful. Please make sure you hit that bell notification. That way you know when these videos appear. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audio hall. You get direct access to me if you want to ask questions or suggest YouTube topics. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.